In this question, we're told that the curve C has equation y equals minus 2x cubed plus 12x squared minus 18x plus 5. Part A asks us to find the coordinates and nature of each of the stationary points of C. So to find the stationary points of C, we need to find where dy by dx is equal to 0. So in order to do this, I need to first differentiate y to get an, an equation for dy by dx. So minus 2 times the power, which is 3, gives us minus 6 x decrease the power by 1 from 2 to 3, from 3 to 2, plus 2 times 12 gives me 24, x decrease the power from 2 to 1, minus differentiating 18x gives us 18, and differentiating the constant gives us 0. So now state that dy by dx is equal to 0, and substitute that into our equation, so I get 0 is equal to minus 6x squared plus 24x minus 18. Now, a couple of things to notice here. First of all, I want a positive x squared, so I'm going to multiply or divide this by a negative number. Second thing is that there's a factor of 6 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by minus 6. And what this leaves us with is the equation minus 6x squared divided by 6 minus 6 is x squared minus for x plus 3 is all equal to 0. So now we can factorise this and get that x minus 3 times x minus 1. So they are the factors of plus 3 that add to give us minus 4 is equal to 0. So first of all, using x equals 1, substituting into my equation for my curve to get my point, I get y equals minus 2 times 1 cubed plus 12 times 1 squared, minus 18 times 1, plus 5. And so working through this, we get that y is equal to 12 plus 5 is 17, minus 2 plus minus 18 is minus 20, so 17 minus 20 is minus 3, and one of my coordinates is 1 minus 3. Next, substituting in x equals 3. This may take a little bit more work. So I get minus 2 lots of 3 cubed, plus 12 lots of 3 squared, minus 18 lots of 3, plus 5. So we get y equals minus 2 times 27 is minus 54. 12 times 9 is plus 108. Minus 18 times 3 is minus 54. Now notice that the minus 54 and minus 54 will cancel out the 108. So all that's going to be left is that plus 5. So we get the coordinate 3, 5. Now we've found the coordinates of the stationary points, we need to find the nature. So to find the nature, I need to find the second derivative to perform the second derivative test. So differentiating dy by dx, I get minus 6 times 2 is minus 12x. And then 24 x differentiated gives us plus 24. Now, when x is equal to 1, d2y by dx squared is equal to minus 12, lots of 1, plus 24, which I know gives me the second derivative is greater than 0 which means that 1 minus 3 is a minimum. And then using x equals 3, d2y by dx squared equals minus 12 times 3 plus 24. This is going to be minus 36 plus 24, so what we know here is that d2y by dx squared, that's going to be less than 0. Therefore, the point 3, 5 is a maximum. OK, so that's part A done. Let's look at part B. Part B says sketch C indicating the coordinates of each and of each of the stationary points. So what I know is that this is a positive cubic. And I know there's two stationary points, a local maximum and a local minimum. So it's going to look something like this. I know that this first point 
is going to be actually one second it's not if I go back to my thing sorry it's a negative cubic so the curve should be just pausing for a second I just suddenly realized that it's a negative cubic so it knows that it's going to go in this direction and so I know that this first point here is my local minimum which is minus one three and over here this is my local maximum which is three five so now sketching on my axis, I know my axis is to the left of my leftmost point, so I'm just going to add on the y-axis there. And I know my x-axis is going to be somewhere between my local maximum and local minimum. So that's part B, that is my sketching done. Okay, part C says, given that the equation minus 2x cubed plus 12x squared minus 18x plus 5 is equal to k, has three distinct real roots find the range of possible values for k. So what we're saying here is, let's write this in f of x notation, f of x is equal to k. And so what we know is that actually we're trying to solve f of x minus k is equal to zero. So we're going to apply some sort of transformation to this curve and it's going to be a vertical translation because it's outside of our bracket. Now what I have to think about, let's use a different colour for this, is what's the maximum value that I can actually subtract from this curve so that we get the curve and I'll sketch it so that you can visualise it so we'll get a curve that looks very similar except the x-axis is going to come across and just touch there. So the maximum that I can actually translate this downwards is 5, because once it gets to 5 it gets, touches the x-axis and then there will only be two solutions. So k must be less than 5. In the same sense, I could translate this graph upwards. So I could translate the graph so that we've got exactly the same graph, except this time the x-axis, the graph has been shifted upwards so that the minimum touches the curve and we suddenly get two solutions. Now what we're looking at here is the maximum that I can translate this upwards. Now in order to tra translate this upwards what we'd have to do is f of x, or to get this one down the bottom here, this would be a translation of f of x minus minus 3. So that it moves upwards and gives us a positive. Now what we know is that actually any value greater than f of x, uh, any value greater than f of x, uh, sorry, k equals minus 3, will give us this result. So I also know that k must be greater than minus 3. And actually what we have here is a bounded interval because k can lie between minus 3 and plus 5. So any translation, as long as it's not bigger than 5, it won't drop down below, the maximum won't drop down below the x-axis. And as long as it's bigger than minus 3, this local minimum will not rise above the x-axis. Okay, so let's have a look to see how we mark this question. Looking at part A, initially you get a standalone mark for the correct differentiation of the curve. Second, you get a method mark for putting dy by dx equal to zero and forming the equation. You then get an answer mark for getting the x values x equals 1 and x equals 3. Finally, there is a method mark for correctly finding the stationary point and using the correct method to try and attempt to get a uh, nature of one of the points and then you get an answer mark if you get the correct conclusion, correct conclusion for the second point. Finally, looking at part B, 
is just using this idea of using the translation of 5 and 3 gives us a method mark. Uh, so here, really, this is my method mark using the idea of the translation of 5 and 3. And then finally, an answer mark for that correct range of values. Okay, well, I hope my solutions made sense and that you understood how to mark those questions.